Welcome again to the arena in the Rejects EU24. I have um, Leo and uh, Matteo today talking to you about uh, Gateway API and how to migrate your ingress. Nice. Nice. So hey everyone, I'm Leo Lieberman. Uh, I work as an SRE in Google. Um, and specifically on GCE, which is Google Compute Engine, so a little bit down the stack. And I'm also an Ingress to Gateway Maintainer and Gateway API contributor. Hi, my name is Mattia Lavacca, and I'm a software engineer working uh, at Kong. I work in the Kubernetes team, and I'm mainly involved in the Kong Kubernetes Ingress Controller and the Kong Gateway Operator. Also, I, have, uh, I am a Gateway API contributor, and an Ingress to Gateway contributor have been involved in uh, creating the Kong provider for the Ingress to Gateway tool. And today we're going to provide a practical guide to migrate from your Ingress configuration to your Gateway API. So I want to start uh, for a moment and to ask you if, uh, like, basically put your hands up if any of you have ever ran into any frustration with Ingress before. No. Right. So. Yeah, so Ingress was great. I mean, it was really simple to implement. It was widely adopted, but it has its own limitations. So first, Ingress lacked of core features. A lot of core features weren't included in Ingress. That led to custom extensions being everywhere. Um, those extensions were usually in the form of annotations, um, and they weren't portable, so you couldn't just easily switch to a different implementation. Um, it also lacked the protocol diversity, and it had insufficient permission model. Um, and that's the reason for developing Gateway API, right? So before giving a really quick overview of the API, I uh, just want to lay down a few facts. Um, so Gateway API is a CRD-based API. This means it develops out of tree, out of Kubernetes upstream. And this gives us much uh, faster velocity, and, um, and it's short in the feedback loop, essentially. Um, it's a pers persona-focused API, so different personas have different responsibilities. It is flexible, and it is extensible. Um, and I'm going to talk a lot about uh, the extensibility, but essentially, Gateway API learned the ingress lesson, um, and it provided and designed a standard way to extend the API. And lastly, it had, had large community support. Uh, I think we're over 200 contributors now. So yeah, starting with Gateway class, the first uh, resource we're going to talk about. So Gateway class is nearly identical to ingress class, which you might be familiar with. Um, Gateway class lets you represent class of gateways that can be um, instantiated from this gateway class. You would usually find in gateway class the controller name, uh, which is the controller that's responsible to reconcile gateways created from those classes. Um, next, we have gateway, right? Gateway lets you represent your load balancer or proxy config as a Kubernetes resource. Here's an uh, example of a simple gateway. Um, you can see we have the gateway class name is GKEL7 uh, load balancer. We could specify listeners. So um, that the gateway would listen in. So in this case, we have HPS listener on port 443, listens to all the host names ended in example.com. And in gateway, we could all also specify what routes could be attached to the gateway. So for example, and we're going to talk about routes in the next slide. But for example, in this case, uh, we're saying we could attach uh, all the routes from all the names we say to this gateway. And lastly, we could also specify TLS configuration if we want to terminate TLS in the gateway or not. So next, we have routes. Uh, in this example, I highlighted two types of routes. We have HP route, TLS route, but we have much more routes than this. And routes is a way of telling your uh, gateway how to um, pass the request from your gateway to your backends or to your services. So let's just take a look of um, a simple uh, HP route example. So we have uh, an HTTP route of a login service. It's a weight-based routing, two different versions of the login service. And here highlighted, we can see that the routes, we can specify a parent reference. In this case, we're referencing the gateway that the routes should be attached to. We can specify the host names. So this route will only be applied to host names for foexample.com. Um, and there is the first section of the rules. We're saying, OK, we are match all the requests with a pass prefix of login. And lastly, we have the backend references. So we have 90% um, of the traffic goes to login v1, and 10% of the traffic goes to login v2. So wait a minute. I'm sure a lot of you might be saying, like, you know, this API looks familiar. Um, you know, we can achieve it with ingress. 
And right, you, you're 100% right. Uh, this API is familiar, is, is familiar, right? So we could achieve the same thing with Ingress. Uh, we could achieve the, th the same thing with uh, different CRDs that was developed throughout the years to overcome Ingress limitations. But do you remember I, tell, I told you that Gateway API is uh, portable and flexible? So I want to go through really two simple examples. You might be familiar with them. Um, just showcase how, how simpler it is and how portable it is. So the first example, if you want to add a host, right? So in this example, we have um, ingress configuration um, and HP route equivalent configuration. Just provide the same identical configuration for, an, uh, again, an auth service. And if you want to add a host, add a host so if we weren't in a non-Gateway API world, we'd have to duplicate the, the, se the section again and just provide a different host, but all configurations are the same. Whereas with HP route, we'll just add another host. For this, this example, it's bar example.org to the uh, host names repeated field, right? So the next example, I want to talk about, like it's, it's actually an example I really like. Um, so if you were to change an implementation. Um, so this is an identical um, configuration again, if I'm deployed with SG virtual service or if I'm deployed with HTTP route. So if I were to tomorrow, I want to try Contour, try a different implementation in my cluster. So um, with a non-Gateway API, API world, I had to uh, go to Contour Docs, deploy the Contour CRD, and understand how they map all my S2 uh, fields, S2 virtual services fields to Contour. Whereas in Gateway API, I'll just add another parent ref uh, or replace the parent ref. In this case, it will be the Contour external gateway. Um, and the Contour external gateway is probably deployed as part of the installation with Contour. And in this case, I could just test the traffic passing through the Contour gateway. Yeah. So, well, Gateway API has many more features than the Ingress API. Uh, it has this um, extensibility possibility. There is this uh, extensibility which is built in in the Gateway API. So it looks it looks great, right? Uh, it looks shiny. So the, the question here is, well, but should I really migrate from Ingress to Gateway? And the answer is yes. Yes, you should. You should migrate. But Everything has upsides and downsides, of course. So let's start with the upsides. Get API is already GA. <coughs> it has been promoted last year uh, during uh, KubeCon uh, North America 2023. And a new version, 1.1, is going to be released right after KubeCon. So there is a larger variety of features compared to Ingress, as Lior pointed out uh, before. And there is a very large and active community. We have around 200 contributors as of today. The number keeps growing over time. And yeah, I mean, there is a lot of attention on this API. And there have been many different talks, for example, in the past KubeCon and in this, talk, in this KubeCon as well. It's widely adopted because along with the large community, there are many different companies that are working on the Gateway API. Indeed, we have over 25 implementations so far. Um, the, these implementations have different levels of support. Some of, them, some of them are just alpha, some others are beta, some others are GA. But yeah, there is a lot of attention on this API. And of course, there are also some cons. Well, first of all, not all the implementation specific features or annotations are supported by the Gateway API yet. You may be wanting a specific feature uh, that is provided by a specific implementation that is not properly converted, is not properly handled by the Gateway API yet. So maybe the time is not right for you yet. Even if there is a lot of opportunity for you to come to the community, to the Gateway API community, and basically advocate for what you need. And also, the second point is that the migration can be painful and very error prone because you know you have to go through a lot of uh, different maybe ingress configurations and properly convert them into the proper set of gateway API resources. And here is basically the reason why we are here because there is a tool which is called ingress to gateway that is your 
body to help you uh, throughout the migration process. Here is a migration checklist. <coughs> During this talk, we are going through this list, and at the end of the list, when we'll get uh, at the end, the migration process will be completed. First of all, we need to check that your Ingress implementation, your preferred Ingress implementation, actually supports the Gateway API. Then you have to ensure that implementation is conformant with the features that you need, with the required features. Then we'll be writing uh, the corresponding Gateway API configuration. We'll apply them, and they will test them. And at the end, we will be finalizing the migration, and we'll explain how to shift traffic and we'll delete the, all the ingress configurations. First of all, let's talk about implementations. Here is a QR code with a, with a link, uh, and you can go to the implementations page in the Gateway API um, documentation website, and here you can find the list of all the implementations of the Gateway API so far. Uh, some of them, as I said before, some of them are alpha, some others are beta, but you can look for your preferred Ingress implementation and check that it is, also it is also compliant with the Gateway API. Or maybe, if it is not, you can also choose another implementation. But the problem is the level of support for your implementation, because the, there are many different features in the Gateway API, and there is a proper mechanism to understand the support level for each implementation. This mechanism is basically the conformance test suite that is provided by the Gateway API, and it's a suite of automatic tests that can be run by, against, by any implementation against a specific Gateway API version. Um, there is the concept of profiles. Profiles can be HTTP, TLS, Mesh, and probably we will be adding gRPC in the near future. And each profile is basically a container for sets of features. And every feature is a container for sets of conformance tests. <coughs> different, th th there, are, there are different levels for the features. Features can be core features that are needed to claim uh, core conformance for a specific implementation. They can be extended, and they are optional. It's a plus that an implementation provides to their users, and they are implementation specific. While there are conformance tests for the core and extended features, there are no conformance tests for the implementation-specific features because, for, for obvious reasons, I mean, they are implementation-specific. And the uh, output of the conformance test suite is called the conformance report. And this is the tool that is needed by a, by a user to understand the level, the actual level of support uh, for a specific implementation. So you, as a user, are supposed to go through this reports page and navigate through the conformance reports that have been uploaded by the implementations, and you can check all the supported features for each implementation. So report, reports are broken down by API and implementations versions, and are, as I said, they are stored in the Gateway API GitHub repository. And they are actually uploaded by the implementation themselves. Here is a couple of screenshots. On the left side, we can see the uh, structure of this folder. For the version 1.0.0, we have a bunch of different implementations that provided their conformance reports. On the right, we have an example with the Con Kubernetes Synchronous Controller, which for the Gateway API version 1.0 provided two different conformance reports. The first one is for version 3.0.2, uh, sorry, and the second one is for version 3.1.1. Then there is another very useful tool for a user, because yes, I can see that this implementation with that specific Gateway API version supports a set of core conformance tests uh, and extended tests. But should I trust them? I mean, they just uploaded by, by themselves, and who checked this? This can be checked by following the reproduce section contained in the, in the readme file. So basically, this is a tool for the users and for the Gateway API community as well to check that every single report is properly created by an implementation and is legit. It's, it's not faked because, yes, an implementation can fake a report, but it's, it can be figured out by people very, 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 very soon. So it's, it's a tool for the user and for the community to enforce 
the trust around the Gateway PI conformance test. So here is the updated migration checklist. First step was, let's check my implementation supports the Gateway PI. Yeah, we have the page, we can go through the list and we'll choose it. Then we can see that our implementation supports all the core Gateway PI uh, features, yes, and maybe it has also a plus with some extended features. Now, the next step is actually start performing the migration. Thanks. Uh, let's see how much time we have. All right, that's great. Um, so yeah, ingress to gateway. Um, ingress to gateway, as Matthias said before, is your body to kick off the migration process to gateway API. Ingress to Gateway is a simple CLI tool, really simple, that reads ingress and implementation specific configurations from the cluster or from a file and outputs corresponding Gateway API resources. And one thing to note about the name, it's called Ingress to Gateway, but it's not only Ingress API to Gateway, it also supports different CRDs. So it's Ingress configurations to Gateway API. And this leads me to the other bullet. Ingress to Gateway is extensible. So if, if anyone in the crowd is an implementer of the API, I encourage you to add your support because we're getting constant requests from users. Um, and here is a list um, of uh, four implementations that already supports the API. So we have STO, we have Ingress Nginx, Kong, and Apache API 6. And now let's do the migration, right? This is what we're here for. We're here for the demo, not to hear us talking. So for the migration, um, here's the environment we have. We have a kind cluster installed. We have Metal and B installed, just to provide public IP addresses. And we have Kong Ingress Controller installed. This Ingress Controller will only reconcile ingresses. Uh, we will install together the Gateway API, uh, the Gateway Controller. So let's start by installing the controller, right? It's the first step in the checklist. Uh, we pick the Kong Ingress Controller, and we just install it. And then we're going to wait until it's ready. Um, and once it's ready, uh, step one is finished. Now we're going to deploy base manifests. Those base manifests will be used throughout the whole demo. We have two demos, so remember them. Uh, we have a simple TCP echo service that exports a simple TCP deployment on port 1025. And we have a simple service that exports a simple HTTP service um, time deployment that just replies with the current time when you query it at slash now. Uh, let's apply them real quick to the cluster. So yeah, we apply the service. We'll also apply an ingress as part of this demo, as part of this clip. And this ingress will just provide us L7 access to the public IP. And as we can see, <coughs> the ingress will have um, basically the same path prefix at slash now. We can see it's the ingress last name named Kong. It's a Kong ingress. And um, it's referenced to the um, HTTP service backend, which is the time deployment. Um, and yeah, so this is just for completeness. I want to check that the ingress actually working. So this is probably, we're trying to make an environment which you might have right now if you are using ingress and not gateway API. So as you can see, I grabbed the public IP of the ingress from the ingress status uh, field, and we just see all well the ingress status at slash now, and we can see the pod is replying with the current time. So now, we want to use Ingress to Gateway tool, right? We want to start writing Gateway API configuration. We want to have our base point. So we're going to use the tool. We're going to use the print command of the tool with dash A. That means the tool will read resources from all the namespaces, right? We're going to specify the provider. Provider equals Kong. So this means we are looking for Kong-specific features um, and maybe specific Ingress annotations or specific CRDs. And we're going to pipe the output to gatewayapi.yaml. Um, and then we apply it to the cluster. So let's start by executing the tool. So here's the same command I showed you before. And then we're going to just cut it to the screen. So let's focus on what we have right now, right? So what we have is a gateway, the gateway named Kong. Um, and the gateway class name is Kong, which was installed as part of the Kong gateway controller installation. And we can see we have one listener. The gateway listens on one listener, port HTTP. Then we have HP route. The HP route is just exporting, the, like configuring a route to the HP service, the time deployment. Um, and we have the parents ref field, as we saw before, the parents ref fields references the gateway that is just going to be applied. And we have the backend references, and we're matching all the path with the prefix of slash now. 
we applied it to the cluster, and now we're going to continue to check whether it works. So similarly to Ingress, Gateway has its own IP in the status. So we just grab the IP, we see URL to the Gateway. Um, so here we grab the IP. We're going to echo the IP to showcase that the IP is different. And this will be really useful when you want to shift your DNS gradually, if you want to do it. And then we see URL the IP and slash now. We can see the pod is replying um, with the current time. Now I just want to follow up with deleting the ingress just to see that nothing is broken in the control plane. Like, um, so the configuration still works. So we'll delete the ingress. We'll see URL to the ingress to see that the ingress is not working right now. And then we'll see URL to the gateway. Um, and obviously, it should still work because it works independently. And uh, yeah, over to Mattia for the TCP ingress demo. Yeah. Here is another feature of the ingress to gateway, which is the CRD conversion. Because as Lior mentioned before at the beginning, the ingress lacks a lot of features. And among these, there, there is the possibility to set the protocol into the ingress, right? Every single ingress is only HTTP. So Kong created this resource, as many other implementations did in the past. And this is basically just a, an ingress to work with TCP traffic, just an L4 ingress. Its structure is very similar to the regular ingress. It has a set of rules, each with a, with a specific backend. Uh, here we are going to use the TCP echo that we deployed it at the beginning of the, of the HTTP demo. On service port 1025, and the ingress will have the port 9000. The TCP ingress can be also configured with TLS, just to provide TLS ingress, something like that. But for the purpose of this demo, we are just going to use the plain TCP traffic. <coughs> As a first step, let's um, perform some cleanup on the previously created gateway API resources. So let's just delete the gateway and the HTTP route. And then we should see that we are going to apply this TCP ingress. Uh, I've just showed it to you, to you just a couple of seconds ago. Let's create it into the cluster. And so here we have a cluster with a TCP ingress uh, configured. And we are supposed to be able to, to be able to reach our TCP echo server that we deployed before, right? So let's uh, export the TCP ingress IP by grabbing it from the TCP ingress status. Let's uh, print it. It has a IP ending with 0, 100. And if we curl it with Telnet on port 9000 because it's L4 traffic, we can see that the TCP echo pod is replying with the pod name. So everything is working as expected. Now we have to perform again the migration from TCP ingress to the gateway API corresponding set of resources. And to do so, we have a command very similar to the HTTP one. So let's just print everything by setting all namespaces, only Kong provider, and let's redirect the output to a, uh, to the, to a YAML manifest. At the end, we are, go we are going to apply the manifest created. <coughs> so let's print the resources, redirect the output to a manifest, and here we can print the manifest, and this is the important aspect, because with the HTTP demo before, we created a gateway and an HTTP route. Here we are going to create a gateway and a TCP route, which is the L4 route deputed for TCP traffic provided by the gateway API. So it's very similar to the HTTP one, just Kong as a parent, and the rules contains only one rule with a backend ref on the TCP echo on port 1025. We applied the resources into the cluster. And now we are supposed to say that our gateway configuration is properly working uh, in uh, our cluster, right? So let's grab the gateway IP from the gateway status. If we print it, we can see that it is different from the ingress IP is 0101 instead of 0100. If we curl it with, again with Telnet, the pod is replying as expected with the pod name. And yeah, at this moment we have the TCP ingress and the gateway API configurations that are working in parallel and are pointing to the same backend ref, right? So next step is to delete the TCP ingress and verify that everything is still working as expected. 
So if we delete the ingress, we curl again the TCP ingress IP on port 9000, it doesn't work. But if we curl again the gateway IP address on port 9000, it works as expected. So we just deleted the TCP ingress, we have the gateway API resources in place, and the migration is completed. So here is the migration checklist updated uh, once again. The, the fourth step was apply the configuration and test the work. And yes, we applied it and it works as expected. For the last step, let's go back to Leo. OK, so right. So yeah, this was a nice demo, right? But in the real world, we might have more considerations. Um, and we just focused on two of them. I think they're main uh, considerations. But DNS, DNS is one of the main considerations. So if you're you know, using your gateway, your L7, like your ingress L7 traffic, I mean, everyone with its own needs, but you might want to consider doing gradual traffic. Um, so shifting the uh, traffic gradually with DNS weight-based routing. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with tools like external DNS. So consider using them, because external DNS do support gateway and its API uh, route types. So it's really cool to do so. Um, and right, we have the TLS certificates. Um, it's, it's, it's a bullet, but it's a NOAA bullet, kind of. So if you've ever used um, TLS secret to terminate TLS in your ingress, so it should be working as expected if you just reference uh, from your gateway to the TLS. Um, so this, this is uh, a NOAA operation. So oh, now again, the migration checklist, just going over it real quick. We checked the ingress implementation supports um, the gateway API, uh, we picked one. We ensure that the implementation is conformant with the features we need. Well, Matthias explained us how we actually browsing it. We start writing gateway API corresponding configurations uh, with Ingress to Gateway tool, and we might even iterate it, you know, with the documentation or something that wasn't converted as expected. Um, then we have the we apply the configuration, we test the work, and lastly, something we didn't cover for sure, but um, the thing you need to do is shift your traffic on your uh, preferred way and delete the old configurations. So now I want to talk about the road ahead for a minute. So uh, the main upcoming plans for Ingress to Gateway right now is onboarding more implementations. We're getting more and more feature uh, requests on the repo um, to onboard different implementations. Um, so again, if you're an implementer, consider doing so. so but we are planning to work with implementers to, to, um, to basically support them. Um, next, we're going to support, we're planning to support Gateway API extensions, and this will increase the coverage and provide a more, uh, a more complete picture of how do I, my, how do I uh, transfer Ingress and CRD configurations to Gateway API. Next, we have the notification systems to report conversion results. So whenever you, um, whenever you, build, whenever you do the conversion, so some of the, some of the things might not be converted as expected. So we don't want the users to just read logs and try to figure out what it is, because if it's a large cluster, it's really hard. So we are planning to actually build a package that properly reports conversion, what was converted, what was partially converted, and what wasn't converted. And lastly, we want to support more Gateway API routes. I think in two weeks from now, if I remember correctly, we're going to release the second route GA, which is gRPC route. It's going to be the second route after HTTP route. It's going to be GA, so we do plan to, to backfill the support to that tool. Lastly, if you want to get involved, there are indeed plenty of opportunities to get involved, uh, plenty of opportunities to do so. We are part of Gateway API community. We're doing EMEA-friendly uh, time meetings, so you can just check out uh, the Slack page or the repos. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to shoot them. Thank you, Maria and Leah. Um, I am going to take questions from you now. I go with the mic. There's one. I think. Hello. Yeah. Thanks a lot. I have a question. Your example. Uh, you create a, a gateway, uh, and I think you named the gateway Kong, but it's it's just a name you picked. But it might be confusing because when we there is no need to, to know what type of uh, implementation is behind the uh, gateway, right? In the, in the name of the gateway? Yeah. Right, and the name is oh, arbitrary. And the name, and, and we could see Kong, but uh, there was no uh, parameter to set to say it's actually a Kong or it's uh, something else behind it. So the, the only thing that is useful is if, um, the only thing that will be useful is you need to specify the gateway class reference from the gateway. 
to reference the gateway class, and then you can call it whatever you like. And then from the HTTP route, you need to reference to the gateway, right? So the name is arbitrary, right? So uh, actually, actually, the name of the gateway is taken from the gateway class today in the ingress to gateway tool. So uh, if the if the um, uh, if the if the gateway class referenced is is Kong, the gateway is named Kong as well, just just by the tool itself. It's just that it's just the output of the tool, yeah. yeah. But you can change it. It's it's arbitrary. I mean, it doesn't really matter. All right. Thank you both for presenting and uh, having kind of a live migration here. That's um, amazing. All right. Um, next talk will start in five minutes. Thank you. Thank you. We are around.